thinking of you, kid, and we'll go and laugh tonight. Are you done? <laughs> I think you're done. One sure. more time. <laughs> hey, folks, it's Tuesday night. You know what that means. Murder Hobo Inc. is live with Between the Rolls, our shot at a talk show where we discuss various D&D topics and give you a recap of the glorious games we have already participated in. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool shit like the Cacophony shirt, yeah. it's down there. If you want to yeah. join us uh, down in discord land uh it's down there most importantly if you want to be on the talk show or on one of the one shots m hobo inc twitter gmail hit us up we'll get you on here thanks uh in kind to pirate dog dice for beautiful dice and of course oddfishgames.com if the game stinks get a little adventure sense in your life and make it smell a whole lot better. There oh, you're poop dying like poop. The Pope yeah, pirate dog, dog dies. Dies. You got it. Oh, uh, man. The, uh, and see, you just blew my train of thought. Uh, so let's introduce everybody to our <laughs> cast. Uh, uh, David, you're up first. All right. I am David. I play Zadar on our Thursday night show of Cacophony. I am sometimes on... The Saturday one shots, and lately I've been here a lot on BTR, and that's all, folks. And that's so. not a bad thing. Mm -mm, uh, no, I love it. <laughs> Carol, next. All right, so I guess I'll leave my usual. Hi, I'm Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, longtime gamer, and occasional GM who's actually working on something <laughs> to be a GM once again because I got to catch up to Kyle. Uh, you never will. I no, I didn't know that. Actually, that is the truth. I probably never will. Uh, I also play Taryn on the, um, the Saturday campaign, and I'm in the one shots, and I'm here pretty much every week. And it's uh, I'm actually have, having a great time. So, well, great that's it team. For me. what's well, that? But not least, our truck bomb expert, Kyle. <laughs> hey, everybody! Explosive devices is the name of the game tonight. I'm going to blow your minds. Oh, geez. <laughs> and here I was thinking it was home building, you know, like you got to come up with a Bob Vila type character or something like that. You know? Oh, that would have been cool. Or Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Yeah, or, of course, the greatest man on this old house. But I digress. Folks, tonight we're going to do a recap <laughs> of three games. Another good week. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and discuss campaigning in a uh, small nation building scenario. Uh, forgot to tell Kyle that he's running that thing again. So we'll oh. see how well he does. I uh, wasn't ready for that. Yeah, well, you know what? It keeps you on your toes. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. All right. Well, you guys are doing the things. Make sure you have Carol explain as much as possible. Like she <laughs> always does. Uh, I, I'll, I'll try and nudge her in that direction. First one up is episode 157. Dang, we play a lot of games. Diplomatic Immunity. It was the cacophony scenario with David. David, tell us a little bit about Diplomatic Immunity. Diplomatic Immunity. Unless you've seen Lethal Weapon 2, you have no idea what we're talking about. Anyway. <laughs> well, our episode... Centered around uh, Zadar, Cammy, and Daphne uh, playing tour guide to uh, visiting, um, well, we would say diplomat, but royalty. And um, she went on a tour of the city. And let's just say she was a little bit of a holy terror. So, so anyway, a lot of shenanigans from blowing out the side of, a, of the homeless shelter to Zadar getting punched in the face by one of the mint guards because she insisted on having a tour of the, of the national treasury or whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah. And then pissing Frank off by locking down his BBG. <laughs> dice give us dice take it away. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but uh it was a really great episode i mean you're gonna have to check it out it was a lot of fun it really was uh frank did a great job playing the princess and you got you got you got you got a lot right here yeah yeah 
Yeah, Zadar got his nose actually set in place by the by the You're captain twist of the guard. And snap his <laughs> nose, like, <"Cock." laughs> So you, if you want to see some funny shit, check that out. It was it was a great episode. Frank did a great job writing that one up. So it was awesome. <laughs> so wait, guys didn't kill her. Oh, oh, we were tempted. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were tempted, but no. <laughs> I was not sure where you had Daphne with you if you were if she was gonna end up dead. Oh no, right. no, Carrie didn't do fog cloud either. <laughs> now I, I think the important I I'm pretty sure I went over the rules at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, rather well. And I think you missed a, one important aspect of the new cacophony adventures. What was that, Frank? Uh, that's Fauntleroy's new assistant. Yes, Fauntleroy's new assistant. Oh my God! Yes. Uh, Did you see her again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she's, was... just, she's this drow. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it can be all cooter punched, for lack of a better term. It was her knees. So. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, it was fun, but yes, I, I anytime I get the chance to play a spoiled seventeen year old royal, he did a great job. <laughs> I'll jump on that one. That's not the first time you've done it either. No, it is not. I enjoy over the top NPCs because uh, we will talk about that character for months to come, if not years. The, she's no Mortimer J. Sneed, but uh, the princess is. Uh, We'll be seeing more of her probably. <laughs> yeah, she's going to do a Playboy spread next. Oh! <laughs> uh, episode 158 was a one-shot. It actually included all three individuals that you see here tonight, as well as Blake. It was entitled Barrow of the Bull. Uh, since Kyle needs more prep time with his uh, pipe bomb, car bomb, uh, we'll let Carol go ahead and explain what happened in that one. Oh, oh, come on. You know... <laughs> Uh, should it, let's see, should I screw him over or should I actually explain what happened? Guys, mm. I'm going to wing it either way. I'm not actually <laughs> preparing right now. I'm putting together my bomb. <laughs> I mean, this kerosene heater. It looks, oh yeah. Wrapped oh, with sodium and dynamite and fertilizer. Yeah, exactly. He's going to blow up his house. Okay, I get it. Jeez, mm -hmm. Kyle, it's not that bad. Hey, stick to the target. <laughs> Stay on target. <laughs> All right. So anyways, what the hell happened? Okay, so we were on a delivery mission. Didn't even pay attention. Uh -uh. Of course I did. Uh, That's I why Dibble it. was there. Exactly. That's why, yeah. D <laughs> he it was brought a backstory <laughs> episode. Yeah, it was the prequel. And it's it's kind of funny what ended up happening and what we <clears> talked <throat> Uh, so basically, we were on a, we were basically making a delivery of a scroll, and I believe it was a spell scroll. Um, yeah, watch the episode to see what the description of spell scroll was, although I don't remember. We did not get any details of what exactly it did. But regardless, uh, so we ended up finding a cave. Uh, a cave entrance, or rather a tomb entrance, which I think was just a series of caves that were turned into a tomb. Uh, we found basically what was it? Was a rock over? There was a rock over the entrance with, I believe, writing on it, which we never <laughs> understood. I don't think anybody had a way to read it. Or I don't know. I can try comprehend to comprehend. Do, Dewey had <laughs> and not Dewey. Devil he had comprehend Dibble. languages. Yeah, I told you, Devil Dewey. You know. You know, the best part is that when you see Dewey again, he's going to have a level in wizard. Oh, Let's that, confuse it oh, all that, up now. That Wait a minute. I thought, how many classes are you taking on Dewey? Stay on target. <laughs> it's working. It's working. You know I what? So much You're about to become Porkins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally doing this to try to help poor Kyle because it was sort of thrown at him he's hosting about he knew five minutes ago <laughs> i didn't <laughs> no it wasn't in the email so i believe so anyways uh we go fine i'll, I'll try to keep it relative short. we go into the we do get our get into the the tomb 
I'm trying to remember what the hell we fought. I remember we had the we had the alcoves. I knew damn right well too what I was gonna find something that was gonna pop out and try to beat us up or kill us or whatever. Well, we started with the Anakeg. Oh yeah, that's right. There was the that's right. The Anakeg fight was before we discovered the thing. Sorry, I'm, I am a miss. I knew I missed the fight, but we dispatched we dispatched that pretty easily, which is probably why it really isn't sitting in my mind real well. We dispatched him quick. And then we, we said, then we got in. And the next thing we found were the were the basically the the five alcoves. There were four that had these, you know, skeletal uh warriors in it with uh, I think they had like minotauri type helms, you know, helms with horns on it. And four of them didn't animate and they all had just junk on them. Uh, but the, sorry, three of them didn't AMA, but one of them did. I knew one was going to do it, but it was like a matter of, okay, which one is it going to be? And there was also a bubble. I guess I'll call it a bubbler. There was a little water fountain in, in the fifth alcove. Uh, which bubble and a double and a bubble along. Dibble, dabble, double. I've been watching really, a lot of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. We didn't discover that it really did anything other than bubble fresh water. Um, we did find an amulet after the fight, which was not magical, I don't believe. It was just treasure. So then we proceeded in further and we got to a split, a split in the road. And I believe if we went left, there was actually a cave in. Of course, we probably should have just gone right. <laughs> but no. We're a bunch of idiots. So we went left and we managed to go through the cave-in. Uh, uh, with Blake blast, pretty much blasted it out of the way. And so we went in through there and we get to this chamber with, let's see, there was the four minotaur skeletons in a rectangle. It was in a circle, which is like what usually it is. It was a rectangle. And in the middle, there was some disturbed dirt in this rectangle and there were wooden shards uh, that we could see popping, basically popping up above, above the dirt. So I was the brave idiot that decided to go investigate it, which was all sorts of fun. And I determined after pretty much like clearing the dirt away, it was like a dream catcher type thing. And it was sitting on top of a, a, a casket uh, or a coffin. And I was like, so after hemming and hawing and having these three, those three fuckers pretty much goad me into it. And they pulled the, hey, you try anything once, right? So I opened it. However, I, when I opened it, I did make sure to keep the dream catcher sitting on top of the, cast, uh, of the coffin. So I opened both at once and all that was in there, well, there was, I think a mummy but he didn't animate, thank God, probably, probably because I kept the dream catcher sitting on top of the coffin. But he did have a nice shiny gold crown with a bunch of gems in it that I pulled off his head and kept. Uh, meanwhile, who was it? I believe David, I believe Laroque was had Laroque. headed outside along with, uh, oh crap, I can't remember Blake's. Uh, Uncle Arthur. Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Uncle, no, Uncle Arthur was in the room. <laughs> Frank, Dibble, you muted. <laughs> the devil the rock, the shape, the shifter. Uh, I believe you would shift into a crocodile, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You a crocodile both, shifter. You both fucked off and left the room. Mature eyed and silly, by the way. Uh, How could they? Yeah, you left the room. It's like you bunch of chickens, and I knew who's. But you know, it wasn't a bad idea because it didn't anim animate and attack me. So, hey. So then we went down the other path. The one we should have probably just gone down in the first place. And basically that time, I think time was starting to run out. So we got to the end of the, uh, we got to the end, the last chamber. And in there, <clears throat> yeah, we, um, we, we found, it took us a while to find the friggin' fight. But well, we did find the BBEG and it was a Gorgon. Wasn't that was uh yeah, real fun. Uh my dice really hate me <coughs> that night because I couldn't make a DC 13 constitution constitution save. I can I can't even say it. Jeez. 
couldn't even make the damn thing basically with a Gorgon in their breath. If you uh, fail two saves in a row, you turn to stone. So Rainier, it was lovely knowing you, but now she's a good old stone statue. She's not uh, dead. Just... No, she's not dead. And we'll get, I'll get into a little bit on what we discussed after because it was just too amusing not to share. Uh, but the, we missed, we sadly missed the, uh, the treasure room. I mean, There's I was a treasure room? I, there was a treasure room off that room behind oh, where the garden. Ran and out of time. <laughs> if only it wasn't a three hour long episode. I think we could have gotten there. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a four. Actually, I believe that was written for like a four hour long Oh, yeah, uh, there there were eleven encounter points. You guys oh, saw four. Probably longer than that. Then probably more than four hours. Because Adventures in Philbar gives you the most bang for your buck. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Keep in mind, all we basically yeah, we, heavy. this podcast is just the taste of what he writes and are in the scenarios that which ah. Uh, what is it? Drive through RPG. Now, normally yeah. you're supposed to get like an ice cream taste. You know, where you're like, oh, can I try the mint chocolate chip? And they give you that little ice cream dip. Carol is great. If she ever opens up an ice cream shop, go to her place because she'll scoop you out a thing. Here's yeah. the taste. No, because I'm a friggin' cheapskate. I wouldn't know you get a taste. <laughs> it's but my it's... birthday. Don't I get a free count? <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, but no. Well, so. So yeah, basically that was it when we got out. They drag apparently they dragged the Rainia statue with them. And then what we were talking about afterwards is they sold the Rainia statue somewhere. <laughs> we didn't decide where. And then Dibble Divot took that money, opened up his shop in Cacophony, then saved up the money, threw the shop, went and bought Rainia back, and now she's sitting in a shop waiting for him now to get enough money to restore. I'm like, that's hey, pretty uh... good. Did we mention pretty- where Dibble? I was about to say, we will dress her up for the holidays. Yeah. Ending like this, you know, with probably a couple of blades out, because last thing I did before I did attack her. The look of surprise <laughs> on your face. <laughs> probably hanging your hat, you know, probably hanging hats and coats on there. I'm a coat rack. I <laughs> think that's awesome. But hey, you know, they wake her up. That mean, and I ever do get to play cacophony again. I guess that means rainy is in cacophony, which was never the plan. But you never know. We could sell you to a wizard, and you know, it'll turn into a my fair lady thing. He'll... Uh, no, no, I like a guy named I... Aristotle trying to do aerodynamics and wants to push off a pillow, a feather pillow, and a statue to see which lands first. <laughs> You know, though, you can actually pick up, as long as you get all the pieces, you can actually put it back together and cast and, and restore the person. Even it if depends people, on how nice your DM is. That's true. I think we all know but, what that answer is going to be. Yeah, she's going to be incomplete. Yeah. <laughs> Dick. So. Very good. Uh, final review is episode 159, The Adventurer's Arc. This featured our <laughs> tri-generational group in Margu. In the previous episode, they managed to borrow slash steal a total warship. Uh, yeah. In this episode, they had to learn how to steer it, and that did not go so hot. Uh, there was a lot of discord in the ranks uh captain copius claimed a leadership role but uh there were some issues especially with first mate phineas uh phineas uh latrec thank you phineas latrec uh being his first mate and uh being rather bossy uh the group finally did manage to fight off some of the cat tell uh drug lords uh, before figuring out how to sail, and they found themselves, much to Copius's chagrin, on the wrong coastline because where he pointed at the map and what he said were two different things. Uh, the group has entered a cove in a backwater turtle village, and as uh, Jason has promptly pointed out, it smells a lot like the Magnificent Seven. 
Hmm. But they need supplies, and uh, the turtles don't want gold, so uh -huh. they gotta do a favor. Uh, that brings us to the end of Kyle's bomb making uh, attempt, and <laughs> on to the next section. Oh God, I dropped a piece. <laughs> oh my God, it's Run. probably not that important. It's probably uh, the and he has to stick in there so it won't blow up. Whoa, we're mature, but geez, easy on the sexual. Gosh. All right, Blake. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to go on to discuss uh, civilization campaigning, i.e. collectives, republics, democracies, city-states, and young nations. Kyle, are you ready to take it away and you do the talking? No. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, catch last episode when we discussed prehistoric. Uh, I'm not sure how we got on that tangent, uh, but it worked out pretty well. I thought mm -hmm. it was interesting. A lot of good ideas thrown out I, there. I think we ended with the Bronze Age, right? And, and that we were so. say we're we we're kind of gearing up towards that discovery of uh, metals. Yeah, yeah. So, that was yeah. like one of the ideas for a campaign idea was to push towards the next stage, but we didn't actually go there. And now Kyle is going to lead us bravely into where we've all been before, uh, Greco-Roman feudalistic societies. Yeah, well, medieval uh, 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 would be included on here, which is, you know, where all D&D &D takes place. This chair is going to break underneath me. That thing is heavy, by the way. I haven't even put the fertilizer and kerosene in it yet. <laughs> but you're ready be for okay, voting man? day. <laughs> ready uh -huh. for just to be clear, I am not making a bomb. I am not going to use it on voting day. Very fair. Very fair. <laughs> it is a kerosene heater. Folks, we'd like to go ahead and report that at. we are only kidding, and please do not call the It's for his ice fishing shanty. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, my, my husband's college roommates found out what happens when you do things like threaten the president, even as oh, a joke? Yeah, that's a that's a no no. Oh, they did it on a college radio show, and the Secret Service showed up at their door because they threatened the president. It was a joke, but they took it seriously. So yeah, you're All gonna you be got to do is broadcast it. Well, Kyle. All right, Kyle. I've done so. <laughs> Thank you. I needed the breather. I needed a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, who? Trump. My name's Blake, and I'll see you on election day. <laughs> uh oh, hey. I'm gonna get my script here. With Actually, it wasn't written. a bomb, it was a ballot box he was putting together. <laughs> Kyle's not a Republican in California. <laughs> uh, wonderful, wonderful people. Okay. You know they'll review a lot of our shows and go, fuck these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Will they, though? We're, we're, Ooh, thank you, we're Secret Service, for that government in. money. <laughs> Air dollars. <laughs> Air dollars is right. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the classic... D, D campaign, although sunken down a little bit there, uh, by the idea that we're doing um, something akin to a city state where you may have small one or two family clans, but they live in a general area where there is a central city and all that. Just to clearly define what we're talking about, that can be the keep in a castle where, you know, the green dragons and King Arthur's knights right out from, that could be. Uh, Sparta or Athens. It could be uh, the middle of a zombie apocalypse and that's the prison where everyone is living from. Just to give a few ideas oh. and to be like... <laughs> Season 3, folks. No. Yeah. no. So, going around, I don't think we really have any limitations, but is there any homebrew or something like that that you would add to kind of make this campaign flesh out. So maybe if you were in the Bronze Age, you might lower the dice on all the weapons to show bronze stuff, or you might make shields a little bit more easily broken or take out full plate armor if you're doing Bronze Age stuff. Let's start with Frank. Shocker. Anything you'd add 
turn <laughs> in homebrew a little bit just to kind of fit the theme. I would go ahead and homebrew the fact, especially if you're in a city-state motif, uh, that each city-state is renowned for a speciality. So if you want a really good sword, uh, you need to go to Steel Forge. But if you're looking for armor, uh, Hideaway Bay is the place to go. Uh, that way you could go ahead and require travel, uh, find and gold to buy stuff, or uh, vice versa, finding the materials uh, needed for the metallurgy to go ahead and take place. So I find that that would be an excellent aspect. It wouldn't be very much for the, the big quest unless you're playing King Arthur, but it would give you a lot of mobility in the minor quests until you decide, okay, I, gotta, I, I need a bigger thing for them. That would be my two cents. You're muted. Right. That, that, was, that sounded like a great idea. That was yeah, a no, great no. idea, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't. I was telling you, God damn it, Frank, you're supposed to start with player creation shit first before we move on to the big world uh, creation. Oh, the pl players. What? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. I got you. Gotcha. Uh, I, I would say that uh, have them be part of a militia movement or a uh, thieves guild slash brigand group. Uh, you can do nobility, uh, but those are usually candy asses. At least uh, sewer <laughs> dwellers have to fight for their food. So uh, I, I would say be part of a group and then <coughs> banished from said group because you just don't fit the mold. Then you and the others form your own ragtag group and become the gangs of New York. All right. All right. Uh, David, anything you'd add, subtract? <laughs> Classes uh, all look good. I mean, we don't have to worry about including wizards in this one. Mm -mm. I think I would move on to like discovering theology, you know, organized religion. There is no God. There is only there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, that can be used. I mean, because come on, the history of the world. I mean, you know, theology played you know a major part and a lot of civilizations rising and stuff like that so you know so i figured you know that could that could be like a catalyst for a campaign but i don't know crusade sure. a crusade there we go <laughs> yeah you got the crusade i mean yeah the, you, you're right though because i mean remember you're also talking ancient greece and rome i mean think about <laughs> It's really well-defined pantheons, both of them. Although they were pretty much the same, same portfolios for the gods, just different names. Um, I don't know. I'll, let's see. What would I do? I mean, you guys kind of covered great. Because, right, I wouldn't. They're covering the old stuff. What about feudalism? Uh, and I mean, you could go Japanese feudalism if you wanted to, I suppose. I might be thinking the wrong thing there. Or you could go your post-apocalyptic modern. What are you thinking? Well, well, I mean, you're talking about, well, aren't we talking about like Bronze Age and our Rome? Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm getting my timelines correct here. If medieval is about the point where Rome and Greece were at their height. We're um, talking more about the area that you play in or at least start in. So, you know, like I said, you have your castle, you have the Baron and he controls all the slaves. Uh, it could be, again, the uh, prison yard where there's a bunch of zombies out there and you kind of all have to congregate to this one area that you explore like that. Uh, or, as most common is, whenever the word city-state comes up, everyone thinks Greece. I know. Uh, so I had two thoughts on, like, different groups you could put. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, one would be uh, to think about Greece or Rome. A uh, group of gladiators, I think, would be really cool uh, to start with that. You start with that, and then, but you're slaves, and then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to break away um, and then start your ventures from there. The other one is thinking that it, that would be kind of cool is you are a group of feudal knights. You're working for the king, like Knights of the Round Table. I think that'd be a lot of fun to play out. And then, I mean, that to me might even have bigger applications you know in terms of quests and such because now you're working for the king but 
I sort of think that in, in, in like the gladiators, which to me are slaves, the knights are definitely have a lot more freedom and they're, they're actually nobles themselves. And then I'm Spartacus. <laughs> they're not pansy. The knights are not pansy asses, but they are nobles. So I sort of, I sort of like the, the thought of that. Yeah, no, that's great. In terms of for, for players. Sure. And are you trying to, would anyone add anything to what D and D is now to kind of fill fill that out, or take anything away? Just in general, yes or no. If you have something off the top of your head, honestly, this is classic D and D, so I imagine there's not much take <laughs> away or adding on. That's what I was going to say. Is really this is what D and D was knights and and such as that was the foundations of it. I don't think. I pretty much leave it. The, the way I would make my society, I mean, it'd be all the things I put in it to flavor it, but I wouldn't necessarily take away anything from the rule, you know, to remove anything out of the rules or it, it'd be, but it'd be all stuff I put in to flavor what that kingdom is like or city state. Mm -hmm. Frank? Uh, if you wanted to, you could use the alternative <laughs> uh, gunpowder weapons and do musketeers. Ooh, okay, that would be fun. Yeah, that got my interest. <laughs> and because then you can add the flavor of an evil Cardinal Richelieu, or better yet, a good Cardinal Richelieu and an evil sect of uh, bishops or bishops. Oh yeah, or musketeers. Yeah, so something like that. Because the gunpowder rules are largely scoffed at by hardcore D and Ders. Is wow, there's no fucking guns here. Blah 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 even though the Minotaurs know how to use uh, gunpowder for some campaigns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of guns. <laughs> and oh. I've seen how broken gunslingers can be, so. Now, I but, could see doing post-apocalyptic. That, that'd be kind of cool. I, I don't think I could run a whole campaign. I suppose I could, but uh, that might not be too bad to try because you got to find ammo. Hey, if we, hey, if we don't succeed, you know, in the in the campaign, then it can be post-apocalyptic. So. There's going to be a fucking sniper on your head hey, at all times. Dark, <laughs> dark sun, that's all I got to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor salt in that wound. <laughs> I, uh, I, I did a, a campaign offering for a convention in the East, and uh, they required dark sun. And oh, that wow. was brutal. Hey, Fury Road, folks. That's what that's what I'm going towards. Control of resources, you know. The, bar, the bard strapped to the front of the wagon. Exactly. That would be <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> hey, I, I have a question to toss out, actually. Does post-apocalyptic mean always mean future? No. Have, have, have any of you ever envisioned a post-apocalyptic world where the apocalypse happened in the Middle Ages? Uh, a cataclysm. bubonic plague? Yeah. Cataclysm? That's Dragon Lance? But still, that wasn't even, I mean, Dragonlance, but I mean, bubonic plague in, in the real world did not kill everybody. To me, it was not a total apocalypse. It didn't, it killed a lot of people, but it didn't, I don't think it wiped Are out. Are you aware of what we're living through right now? <laughs> so. We're not going to lose enough people, and, and I don't think we're going to go backwards that Excuse much. Excuse me, I got to go huff some spray <laughs> paint and uh, get my <laughs> flaming guitar. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's true. The Dark Ages would be a rather interesting. Actually, if you did the Dark Ages, would you, you know, because science was basically shut down and such. Because you... of the church. Yeah. Which, Which I recommended. <laughs> it's something like that. Would you consider maybe putting the kibosh on wizards uh, uh, once again? You'd well, have to. Well, here's, here's a theory. How about moving into an age of enlightenment and that's where the wizards start to come in yeah so. but if you played in the dark ages themselves though which i said would you put wizards in that campaign and if frank said no and i i tend to agree with them or no go fahrenheit <laughs> 451 the enlightened nice. age is over everyone <laughs> is burning magical books now in the name of pyro the lord fire sun god i actually like that idea dude with a book. i actually i love that idea do you know where i got that idea 
that Frank, is- one of his campaigns was an anti magic campaign and i was like oh, this is what it's gonna be like it wasn't like that but it was it so <laughs> to, be <laughs> fair, <laughs> to be fair you came up with the idea frank and then everyone's like well i'm gonna be an arcane magic user i know it's like it's- yeah Fahrenheit <laughs> <laughs> oh, 451 folks <laughs> fuck you <laughs> and that's where you put the restrictions you're like all right to arcane screw the rest of you <laughs> Magic is frowned upon, and if used, I'm going to be a wizard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did. I did do that. My husband ran that exact type of game, um, where well, wizards were re- wizards were okay, but they people still looked them funny. But sorcerers, because it was innate, they were hunted and such. And I'm like, but you said it. If you haven't figured this out, this out about me now, I like characters who have got to, you know, I, that are being hunted or, or have to skirt that. You know, <laughs> I can give you. So a, I played a sorcerer, and it was it was a lot of fun in that campaign. The Witcher, folks. Mm. That's a prime right. example. <laughs> example right there. Although he's not outlawed, though per se, but you're right. He gets a lot of funny looks. <laughs> Well, like he's based, but he was hired as a mage <laughs> slayer, so you know that's yeah, true. So, oh. I, right. I, I I like that beat, mage slayer. That's yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry I started and asking. We've been derailed, fun. everybody. <laughs> I don't don't that's great. I don't have to think of anything else. <laughs> Start playing Crazy Train. Here we are. You got 20 minutes to fill now. Okay. Ah, shit. No, I distracted you people. Well, that was the <laughs> players section. Yeah, no, that was the players section. Let's talk about the DM section. And Frank had a great point earlier mm-hmm. where, you know, when you build and from here on out, I'm just going to reference it as city states, mm-hmm. but it can take place in any timeline. All it is is a central hub and maybe some outlying things that are very small in a certain area. So city states often have something. Uh, very interesting about them that will attract people to come there and live there. Uh, Spartan had the Spartans, uh, the Athens. And a big had, hole in the ground. <laughs> big hole in the ground where they kick people. Because <laughs> that is Sparta. Sorry. Well, hey, you know what? If I lived in Sparta, I'd be happy to live there because. I'm not getting invaded anytime soon. And there's a bunch of buff naked men walking around. And if you're Greek, you're into that. Unless you're in Sparta with uh, Archie Bunker and uh, Gene Autry's kid in the heat of the night. Because that was in Sparta, Georgia. Oh, <laughs> no, there we go. That was Old crazy. person comment. Catchphrase. Yeah. Catchphrase. That yeah, catchphrase. I finally caught up to that episode. Catchphrase. Uh, oh, real quick, let me finish what I'm saying here. Oh, or ahead. it's something where it's feudalism, and you're stuck there because that's where you live, and you are more or less you can't leave. What what are the vassals? Is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Vassals. Oh, yeah. Serfs and vassals. Serfs. Serfs and vassals. Thank you very much. In which case, those people can start something interesting there, but we'll talk about it later. So, what makes, say, your city state uh, appealing and a great place for the party to start off with? What's there in particular that's going to do that? Do you let the players maybe even develop that and just ask them at the very beginning? What makes this place interesting? Why do you live there? as opposed to feudalism, why you're, you're here. Deal with it. Starting with Carol this time, because you can talk up a storm. <laughs> no, usually usually I, I tell my players where they're going to start. Uh, I, mean, I will give them an idea what that place is now. If I, all right, so if I was to build yeah. a town, and why would it be attractive? Because you're right. I'm sorry. Spartans are not the only reason why you would live in Sparta. Obviously, sure. there was, all the Spartans went there and had to be Natural naked men. Yes, but continue. It's naked men. And it's obviously- naked men. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's naked men oh in God. Sparta. And, and Twitch just shut us off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, that yep. wasn't six seconds, but I'll make it six <laughs> seconds. Yep. Ask my wife. What? For, for example, before, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons that made Sparta <sighs> strong was their weapons and their shields. Their 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 protective gear. I mean had nothing to do with their tactics, right? <laughs> their oiled bodies <laughs> chiseled <laughs> from rock. <laughs> but they had the tools. They had the tools also, you know, to, to be a familiar... I'm sorry. They're going to come in with this. It's, I'm sorry. It's... I can't stab that man. Have you seen his abs? They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe they're that... <laughs> No, as for my place, I probably I love port cities. I love I love to put I love cities right on the ocean with a river so that you can have trade. Um, and yeah, probably some natural resources. I would pick probably some commodity that city is known for. Uh, yeah, I, li I like the example of you know maybe there's mines nearby so they can you know mine really really good metal. And they've got excellent, you know, they've got experts uh, in how to work it. Or maybe there's gems or maybe, or maybe there's very fertile fields and then they can also trade food. Or you know, fertile men like in Sparta. <laughs> oh my friggin' Lord. All right. I think that's enough for me. And I the women were pa-boom, 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 <laughs> How they kept their armies, folks. <laughs> ka -boom, ka -boom, ka -boom, boom, boom. All right. Oh, you're showing your age right there, Frank. <laughs> there. So we got Carol. She wants to have a port city, nice big yeah. trade. Yeah, no. You're you're planning on being the capital, the the yeah. ruler of a nation here. Yeah. So we're starting small first. It uh, is. Frank, oh. what are you Beginning. doing in your city to make uh, uh, it interesting for the players to start off there, and I imagine we're spending a few levels in the city. Okay, uh, I, I too, like Carol, enjoy the port city, but I'll go ahead and take a con approach to it, and I will go uh, a kingdom in the middle of a fertile land where food is plentiful. And uh, tired of being a, a backwards ass country fuck or as we say, somebody from Mississippi, uh, you want to become a townie, <laughs> West Virginia, uh, you become a townie uh, because you like to eat. Uh, that is your main goal. When you arrive, you discover, holy shit, they've got innovations here, uh, like three-story buildings, and you can be like Hoosiers. Holy shit, this is big. Uh, they can have sewer system to keep the uh, illness and disease down. And as well with as that, irrigation for the yeah, land, too. That's right. Because, uh -huh. you know, the manure saves time. Just takes it drink. right out of the city and into the fields. <laughs> and then Aqueducts. That, yeah. And that leads you to, uh, hey, there's a problem in the sewers. There's a problem on the aqueducts. Uh, and I think uh, the next freebie is uh, actually an issue with an aqueduct. Uh, I don't think I've released that. That's OP, so that's a free one. Uh, but yes, that offers you business opportunities for you and your new cadre of friends. Uh, and it could be a port city, but uh, let's go in the middle of an agricultural field. We'll call it India No Place. India No Place. India No Place. I like it. It has this ring to it. Feels like home already. Feels like it's a crossroads of America or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd walk 500 miles and <laughs> walk the hell 500 out of miles. <laughs> <laughs> that would be mine. Yeah, but okay. I do like David's aqueducts. Yeah. And I'm already just listening to you two talk about it. I'm already going down the cascade of okay. Even if we're starting worshiping new gods, clearly Carol is a goddess of commerce. And maybe I'm sexualizing that or being a sexist as I say that, because of course it's a <laughs> woman saying, who's handling the money. I don't or, and I'm I, wading through shit in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> Never really associate one with the other. Um, you know, I, 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 men, candle money too i mean so i i don't know i don't Let's see be how fair your husband plays D and D and pathfinder and all that other stuff and many's cost <laughs> a lot of money 
Yeah, but I, why do you think I do commissions? Exactly. All right. 40 Christian minutes, goes. folks. Exactly. David, down to you. You're making your campaign. It's going to be in a city state like area. Mm -hmm. What makes your place attractive to people from the outside that they want to come there? Or are you going to be a jerk and be like, no, this is where you start and you're slaves and you can never leave? Mm -mm. What are you doing? Frontier city state on the edge of an empire, man. Kansas. You know, uh, because the rules of the empire are loosely enforced and there's a big wide open territory right, right beyond. So, you know, kind of like a gateway, kind of like St. Louis, you know, to the, to the West. (laughs) So we got Boston, we got Indian, no place, we got (laughs) St. Louis. There we go. (laughs) Yeah, or you know, trade princes are are you know taking over, and you know, so yeah, sure. the law laws of the empire just really don't apply. So until the empire decides to expand your way further, exactly that leads to a great campaign. Our New governor, <laughs> <laughs> which honestly leads to the next thing of you know, what's your campaign arc? Are you staying in a small area? Are you getting the hell out of Dodge immediately? But for sake of interest, let's say one through ten levels. Oh, You're God. staying in your city state for that long. You've got to make it interesting. Obviously, David is already covered with the <laughs> fact that the Empire is moving in. Uh, so, uh, Frank, dun, let's dun, start with dun, you because dun, you can dun, keep things. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, natural disasters, i.e. Uh, sandstorm, hurricane, a tornado hits the crops and suddenly uh, you got to figure out if you can uh, fix it or if it was unnaturally caused, uh, ergo uh, BBG, fight through the forces, take them out to save the land and become the hero <laughs> that you are, uh, or like Cacophony, uh, a series of endless, mindless, sometimes uh, retarded adventures in a city that have no rhyme or reason, but leave you with a lasting sense of wonderment because the NPCs are so magnificently played by a superior. Oh, DM. God. You can really pour it on. Who is this DM? Is, I'd I don't love for him to be my shit. DM sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's not talking about cacophony because there's just no way, you know. Or raiders, so uh, people who are hungry, right? Not to uh, hijack David St. Louis, but maybe uh, the Indian No Place Indians come in and (laughs) uh, they come in peacefully, but quickly decide uh your wampum not enough, me want more wampum. Uh, and if that wasn't horribly stereotypical uh, i don't know what is so uh the nice thing about any city state is like carol's alluded to the commerce will bring people in and out so you can literally have an endless it's like watching cheers it's only a bar but holy shit there's a lot of stuff coming in and out (laughs) (laughs) all right and carol you've got your port city one through ten, what's the campaign arc there? What's keeping your players involved in your city state? That's a, I mean, I, he kind of stole like party ideas of his. Yeah, I mean, you could just you could have a, a, all sorts of urban intrigue. You know, sure. I, I lots like, of factions. Yep. Um, yeah, you, you could have organized crime. I mean, remember, I guess this is supposed to be small. It is uh, supposed to be small. You guys are making your cities really big, but hey, to be uh, fair, magic is a thing, so why wouldn't it be a little bit more advanced? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that it's a sta- this place is established. It doesn't have to be huge. I thought about even like, you know, an educational center, but I feel like that would be a much bigger city and mm. much more advanced in terms of time-wise. Uh, the other thing I was thinking of, of course, to, to steal a uh, somewhat popular trope uh yeah the miners have dug too deep and they found something they really shouldn't have 
But to me, that to me would be like a level, like that would be towards the level 10. I'd have to have like stuff to start everybody out low level and then work towards that. Sure. So, Underage yeah. minors. You could have, I mean, you could have pirates. And Drunken things, children everywhere. Uh-huh. It could be, I said, it, it, it's a port city. I could be a pirate city. I mean. Boats well, and hose. <laughs> you know what? To take, actually, to take what you had, David, and combine it with mine, you, it could be a pirate city on the, on the very edge of the empire. Uh, New that, Orleans, folks. <laughs> you have slaves. What's that? Ooh, that yeah, is a, slaves. That is a good topic. Bob. I was going to bring that up on the tribal one where you raid other tribes and take their men and women as slaves, but that seemed a little bit too much for normal people. What do you in, think, Carol? In, oh. hmm. Well, I actually, in my, king, in my campaign world, I do have two of my nations do have slaves, so it is something that Racist. And it's, Are they it's tabaxi? That, Say they're tabaxi. They're tabaxi. Knew it. No, because I don't. Wait, wait. <laughs> you want some catnip? You want some catnip? <laughs> hey, 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 when I when I wrote up my world, tabaxi did not exist. Right, because okay. you crushed them already. <laughs> Oh, this, they, this, they've this. been written out of history. Right. <laughs> Genocidal <They>, turd. <laughs> it didn't really exist until what, fifth ed? Yes. I know cat folk, which is what they're based on, existed in 3.5, I believe. But cat lord in the fiend folio. Huh? That's all it really. You have Rakshasa, so, but that's not the same thing as a tabax. Rakshasa. You know, I mean, yeah, cat, cat beings do have having a playable race has not. And when I created my world, it was, you know, it was like the two E races. So from back then, I mean, Tabaxi didn't exist, but now that they do, they're slaves. No. Anyway, <laughs> they're delicious. <laughs> No. Roasting tabaxi over an open fire. Actually, in one of my kids, kerosene and car bombs, they go boom. Hey, <laughs> stop tiring. Paper yeah, ballots flying out through the air. Secret service kicking in your door. <laughs> door. <laughs> Kyle, will you yeah. shut up? And we can me- mute her. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and mute her real quick because I'm going to get on to my next point real quick. Bye. No, no, don't go. Gosh. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm sorry to cut you off, Carol. Um, uh, can you, you take a minute to finish your thought? Yeah, don't bring up shit like that and expect I'm okay. not going to answer it. So, no. In you got to rise above it. No, in my world, basically, I got the really bad kingdom who will enslave anybody. It's pretty much not them. Uh, it does not matter. Elves, dwarves, uh, they can't, they're humans from the kingdom next door uh anybody it's not them and then i've got the other one where slavery uh, slavery is just a really old practice and there's a viewpoint of well it's people who like are homeless and things like that so they're actually are getting something better out of the deal at least that's the view it's still not right to anybody who's free but uh to them it's 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 more normalized there all right Hey, within a minute, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So, we talked <laughs> about the city states going outside of the city states now, as far as the group is. And we'll say, hey, maybe five to 15 level, because we do want some start. Are you keeping your PCs invested in the city state they started out in? Um, or, you know, three sheets to the wind as soon as they can make it over the mountain with uh, that extra proficiency point, they're gone. Who gives a fuck about where they came from? And with that, let's start with David. Or would you like me to switch over with Frank? No, 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 no. I agree with that sentiment. It's just like, oh, level 15, bye, fuckers. (laughs) Not coming back. Or man, Um, even level five. mm -hmm. Most people are like, hey, screw it. Let's go. How are you Mm -hmm. keeping your interested, but also letting them go out and explore? Um, I don't know. God, uh, it's kind of like putting a carrot before the horse and 
leading it on. I, I would do something like that. Uh, phew, uh, trying to think. Um, again, exploration. Like a, like I said, you know, rumors of things out there. You know, so sorry, I was hung up on on the slavery thing, and I was just like, let's go into indentured servitude. But no. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's whatever time frame you want. You want to do the modern Rick Grimes enslaving his son? That's that's fine and dandy. Yeah, I don't care let's where you're do at. that. <laughs> we saw how that ended. Uh, <laughs> um, no, no, um, no. To keep your players invested in, in something like that, I mean, it has to be goal oriented. It's got to be goal oriented, I would think. So, you know, again, like. Uh, exploring the the rumors of a legend or something like that you know kind of give gives fodder to you know foster you know an age of exploration Mm. you know flat earth theory kind of shit you know so sure sure. so we're going a little bit tribal with that and that the idea is that your city state your Mm -hmm. fortress is the central hub and you can go out into the woods but when you run out of arrows you're running back home and okay all right no i like that uh any meeny money won't catch a tiger by all right fine you hate cats frank hugo you owe uh the guild kept you alive in your younger days they provided healing they provided items that you would need to succeed you owe us now is your time to pay off you need to go off get this uh and then bring it back to us and then your indentured servitude will be lifted unfortunately your indentured servitude won't be lifted until the dm decides level 12 is where you need to get to and you need (laughs) to go get the uh, precipice of magical ice uh, taking you across several regions increasing your level of experience and your pockets because anything you get you keep except for the one item the guild demands Uh, when you get back uh, you find yourself ripe to take over the guild and or the city state and that is why you come back because you owe or maybe they've got uh, your baby sister and uh you're gonna do this or we're gonna whoa, whoa, whoa. pcs a with a family what are you talking about? what are you talking about man no, you <laughs> only thought you were an orphan until i killed your sister <laughs> hey, hey, now folks. you're an orphan <laughs> hey folks i'm fixated on the magical ice thing i'm thinking magical ice cones yeah. You kid, yeah, Taryn had a family at the beginning of that campaign. <laughs> All so- right. Carol, let's end with you. You've got your port city. Your players are about to leave it. Do you what do you do to keep them tied to there? I mean, honestly, I could see the actually opposite of reverse where you are about to start an empire with your city and they're exploring by conquering other city states. But what are you thinking? Oh, you know, that's, mm, that's not a bad idea, except for I wouldn't do it, co- doing the way I run things, I would do it through diplomacy. So you have a <laughs> The tip of my blade. <laughs> so basically, there's a city state not too far off, who is being threatened by another one. So you go in and help defend it. They become your allies. And then you come in, therefore, too, you can conquer the other one with the two, you two team up, conquer the other one. Now you have a third. So you're not wrong. That's that's actually what I was sort of thinking. I was thinking I would keep them around by posing some threat to the city. I'm like, well, then also, though, there could be a threat to a neighboring city that you want to ally with. And then you start building that country, basically. So that's what I think I would do. Then your other city states start being threatened by the fact that you have all this power now and you have to go conquer them because they'll stab you in the back if you don't. Rebellion, but, folks. <laughs> not exactly. I said I would go more through, through I've tried to do diplomatic means 
at least the one I'm helping. Because remember, I said one city state's threatening another. You're helping the one that's being threatened. And then you go, both leave, you both go, you both go and defeat the other one, and you add it to your holdings. Or you're taking their bratty kids on a tour of your city state. <laughs> <laughs> at level fifteen, I wouldn't do that to them. All right, and we'll finish it up here. I think with final thoughts. A question to answer first, but then final thoughts. Because we are now moving outside of the clan, there are uh, increased factions within your city-states. Give me at least two or three, and then give me a final thought to end on. All right? And we will start. Frank, you're the fast thinker. Hit me up with two or three factions in your city-state. Cultists are always the easiest trope to use. Uh, And how about anarchists for a change? Uh, a small group of individuals building not bombs out of kerosene heaters. <laughs> oh, they're looking to kidnap the government of their city state. That's right. Or, as some would say, uh, civilian arrest them, which is horseshit. Uh, but yes, anarchists, I, I don't think, are, are, are used enough. It's a common trope in movies. Uh, not so much in D&D. Uh, and if you can overthrow them before they overthrow the government, the government will reward you. Cultists, uh, you know what those fuckers are up to. <laughs> Sex. Yeah. It all starts and with snakes. a good idea. <laughs> I love it. Our, our founders said to love everyone. We're going to ignore that part <laughs> and just say we're holy and go and do whatever the fuck we want. Those would be the two I would use, anarchists and that. Final thoughts? Final thoughts. Uh, it's uh, it, it's the feudal realm. That's why we started playing D&D, but you can always expand on it. Sure. All right. Let's go down with any, mini, mini, monkey. Yeah, again? Fine. <laughs> All right, because Carol hates cats. Uh, let's go with Carol. <laughs> two to three factions and right. final thoughts for your city-states. Two or three factions. Ah, well, I want some sort of. I, I like rogues guilds. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, uh, and, and since we brought it up, uh, so maybe some sort of organized crime. I think would be, and you could actually have you could have multiple factions right there, dress uh, of stirring up a lot of trouble and a lot of intrigue. So I like also the thought of, I like the thought of like company with the Adventurers Guild. I, I really dig having an Adventurers Guild in my city. Um, uh, factions, I guess also whatever, you know, the. Well, the, who's the ruling class in your city? How about that one real quick? What? Who's the ruling class in your city? You As mean, a like- faction. <laughs> yeah. Are you going with a single ruler? Is there a council? As a that- faction going to base it off there's actually been more or less basing it off of in the actual city that i the, the, the my main city uh but i'm pretending it's smaller yeah it'd be it's a king uh it's a king and he's got um he's he's got his r i, I have the silver hammers which are basically his lawmen slash soldiers uh so yeah that actually ends up being one faction that said there was this well, basically there really isn't a thieves killed in that city now but back when it was starting i could totally see one working underground and they yeah. said and they said there could be organized crime and such okay. so i'll go with that all and right final final thought, thought? my final thought is i do not hate cats friggin guys let it go okay i do not hate cats I do not all hate right cats. all right we can only spend so much time thank you for demonstrating Whatever. i think the lady protests too much for her final thoughts <laughs> and david real quick a couple of faction final thoughts and um since i thought of it in the middle of carol how is your city being ruled okay um merchants merchant skills trade war between them <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Kind of like the history of Waterdeep, you know? So, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So that's my final thought. <laughs> well, that's your final thought too. No, my, my final thought is, uh, yeah, I mean, factions add a whole new dimension to a campaign. So, I mean, uh, that's <laughs> kind of the reason why wizards, uh, you know, have five factions and, kind of makes you choose and stuff like that for adventures league so you know it just kind of opens up the avenue the floodgates with possibilities 
I don't know. That's my final thought. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's Kyle's just, frozen. No, I'm just kidding. He's uh, Frank, <laughs> writing shit in chat, and I think that's broken. You're giving Frank too much credit. That's not Frank. That that is not Frank. That's not <laughs> and Frank. With that, let's thank our producer for making us laugh behind the scenes. Oh, that's her. Thanks. <laughs> And let's Thanks. say goodbye to everybody, and we'll talk about how wonderful she oh, is. Oh, da, da, stuff. Buy stuff, yeah. Uh, buy stuff on fishcakes.com. They'll I'm insert it into the podcast whenever they.